The Pyrenees rise like a fortress, cradling a land where time itself seems to have stood still. Hidden beneath these rugged peaks lives one of the greatest mysteries in European history. The Basques, a people whose origins remain as elusive as the mountains they call home. Unlike their neighbors in Spain and France, the Basques carry a genetic signature that looks frozen in time. While Indo-European migrations swept across Europe during the Bronze Age, reshaping populations from Britain to the Balkans, the Basques resisted. Their DNA shows none of that ancestry. When the Moors crossed into Iberia in 711 AD, leaving behind genetic traces across Spain, the Basques remained nearly untouched, as though history itself paused at their borders. And then there's their language, Euskara. It isn't related to Spanish, French, or even any Indo-European tongue. It stands alone, the last surviving pre-Indo-European language in all of Europe, a living relic that has defied both conquest and time. So who are the Basques? Are they Ice Age survivors? An ancient fusion of hunters and farmers who learned to resist the tides of history? Or something even older, an echo of Europe's forgotten past, waiting to be uncovered. And if the answer is found, it may rewrite everything we thought we knew about the beginnings of Europe itself. Stick with us, because the deeper you look, the stranger this story becomes. And if you love uncovering hidden layers of human history, make sure to like this video and subscribe to Stone and Bone, your place for DNA mysteries forgotten migrations, and the ancient roots of identity. To understand the Basques, we have to step back tens of thousands of years, to the Ice Age. Much of Europe was uninhabitable. Glaciers carved across the landscape, temperatures plummeted, and human populations collapsed. Only a few refugees remained where people could survive. One of them was the Franco-Cantabrian region, northern Spain, and southwestern France, right where the Basque country lies today. Archaeological evidence shows that humans didn't just survive here, they thrived. In caves like Alcheri and Ekane, paintings of bison, horses and deer, some dating back over 30,000 years, testify to a vibrant Ice Age culture. Redated using uranium series methods, many of these images were created between 36,000 and 15,000 years ago. These weren't just works of art. They were symbols of survival in a Europe where most groups had vanished. Even earlier, Neanderthals called this place home. At Lazitschiki Cave, archaeologists uncovered Mousterian tools dating back over 150,000 years. When Homo sapiens arrived around 41,000 BC, they overlapped with Neanderthals for several millennia, leaving behind a lasting genetic legacy. Modern Europeans, including the Basques, still carry 2 to 3% Neanderthal DNA from this encounter. The key point? This land served as a genetic reservoir. When Ice Age populations elsewhere dwindled, the ancestors of the Basques endured sheltered by the Pyrenees and the resource-rich valleys of northern Iberia. As the Ice Age ended, a new revolution transformed Europe, farming. Around 6000 BC, Neolithic farmers from Anatolia and the Near East migrated westward, carrying wheat, barley, sheep, goats, and pottery. Across most of Europe, these farmers replaced local hunter-gatherers, but the Basque homeland tells a different story. At El Portolón Cave, near Atapuerca, scientists recovered skeletons dating between 3,500 and 5,500 years ago. In 2015, a team led by Uppsala University analyzed their genomes. Published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, 2015. What they found was astonishing. These individuals carried DNA from both Neolithic farmers and Mesolithic hunter-gatherers of Iberia. Unlike Central and Northern Europe, where farmers almost entirely replaced the older populations, the Basques retained a higher proportion of hunter-gatherer ancestry. This balance was unusual, and it created a genetic profile that still distinguishes the Basques today. After that initial mixing, something remarkable happened. 
Isolation The Pyrenees acted as a natural barrier, limiting large-scale migrations. But culture played just as big a role. Basque communities developed strong local traditions and identities that resisted assimilation. This explains why, when researchers compare El Portolan genomes to modern Basques, they find an almost unbroken line of continuity stretching across 3,000 years. Few populations on Earth show that level of genetic stability. The Bronze Age was Europe's great turning point. Around 2500 BC, pastoralist groups from the Pontic Steppe, near modern-day Ukraine and southern Russia, swept across the continent. They brought with them horses, new weapons, and Indo-European languages. Their DNA reshaped populations from Britain to Iberia, but not the Basques. When geneticists examined their genomes, they found almost no trace of steppe ancestry. It's as if the great Indo-European tide washed across the continent, only to break against the wall of the Pyrenees. One marker proves just how unusual this is. Nearly 70 to 75% of Basque men today carry the Y chromosome haplogroup R1BDF27. That's one of the highest concentrations of any lineage in Europe. But what's even more striking is how little diversity it shows. Geneticists estimate that it likely spread from a small founding group around 4,200 years ago and then froze in place. This is why scientists sometimes call the Basques a living genetic time capsule. Their DNA looks like it was locked down thousands of years ago, while the rest of Europe kept changing. Other lineages, like Evi 65, linked to North Africa, do appear in Basque populations, especially in Alava and Biscay. But these remain tiny threads in the tapestry, never disrupting the core. In short, what makes the Basques remarkable isn't complete isolation. It's selective insulation. They absorbed just enough to survive, but resisted the sweeping transformations that reshaped their neighbors. If DNA explains how the Basques remained distinct, their language explains why. Euskara, or Basque, is Europe's last surviving pre-Indo-European language it stands utterly alone. Unlike Spanish, French, or German, all of which belong to the massive Indo-European family, Euskara has no known relatives. Linguists have spent centuries trying to link it to something. Georgian in the Caucasus, Berber in North Africa, even Sumerian in Mesopotamia. At times, tenuous similarities appear, such as its use of ergative grammar, a structure it shares with some Caucasian languages. But none of these theories have stuck. Euskara remains a true orphan, a linguistic fossil that has somehow survived into the modern age. And it has survived against extraordinary odds. Today, around 750,000 people speak Euskara across northern Spain and southwestern France. But what's truly remarkable is that Euskara isn't just one language. It splinters into at least five major dialects, some so different they're almost mutually unintelligible. Despite this, the language as a whole has preserved its structure for millennia, resisting assimilation even as Latin, Arabic, and Romance languages swept across Iberia. A groundbreaking 2021 study in current biology discovered that the boundaries of Euskara dialects align almost perfectly with genetic clusters in Basque villages. In other words, the language wasn't just a cultural marker, it actively reinforced population structure. Villages speaking one dialect tended to intermarry among themselves, creating a feedback loop where language shaped genetics and genetics shaped language. Few other populations in the world show such a powerful overlap between speech and DNA. Euskara's endurance also speaks to Basque resistance to empire. When the Romans conquered Iberia, Latin replaced native languages everywhere, from Gaul to Portugal. But in Basque valleys, Euskara remained. During Moorish rule from the 8th century onward, Arabic reshaped much of Spain's culture and vocabulary. Yet Euskara absorbed almost nothing, 
Even under pressure from the Spanish crown in later centuries, when the language was suppressed in schools, Euskara survived underground, passed from parents to children. It is more than a means of communication. It is a cultural shield, a living firewall that has helped preserve Basque identity for thousands of years. Science explains survival, but myth reveals how the Basques understood their own endurance. And here, the stories of the Basques are just as unique as their DNA and language. High in the Pyrenees, caves were said to be the home of Marie, the mountain goddess. She was not a distant deity, but a tangible presence, appearing as a woman with long hair or as fire streaking across the sky. She controlled the weather, brought balance to the land, and punished those who lied or broke community trust. In a culture that prized resilience and honesty, Mari embodied both survival and morality. Beside her was Sugar, often imagined as a serpent or dragon, representing storms, lightning, and male energy. Where Mari brought permanence, Sugar brought change. Together, they symbolized the balance between stability and transformation, themes that echo perfectly with what genetics tells us about Basque history, a people preserved in place, but also able to adapt just enough to endure. Then there were the Gentilac, giants said to have lived before Christianity. According to legend, they built the dolmens, the massive stone monuments that still dot Basque hillsides today. When the Christian cross appeared, the Gentilac hurled rocks across the mountains and retreated into caves, disappearing from human sight. Archaeology shows that these dolmens really do date back to the Neolithic and Bronze Ages, connecting myth with material history. Other beings filled the Basque imagination, Lamia, river nymphs with bird-like feet, who could bless or curse depending on how they were treated. Sorgonac, witches who served Mari, holding night rituals in the mountains. Spirits who explain storms, fertility, and misfortune in ways science could not. These myths weren't just entertainment. They bound the Basques to their land, their caves, their rivers, and their mountains. And strikingly, the archaeology and genetics align with these stories. Continuity, deep antiquity, and survival against overwhelming odds. Modern science shows that today's Basques resemble Iron Age populations almost exactly. Their genetic profile has remained stable for over 3,000 years. Around 70% of Basque men still carry R1BDF27, echoing that Bronze Age founder effect. They also share about 70% of their genome with neighboring Spaniards and French populations. But what sets them apart is what's missing. No Indo-European steppe ancestry, no significant Moorish DNA. In genetics, absence can speak louder than presence. And in myth, silence often hides truths that science only later uncovers. The Basque myths of timelessness and resilience weren't exaggerations. They were reflections of a reality that archaeology and genetics now confirm. A people held in place by geography, identity, and belief. Almost every European population carries the fingerprints of migration. The people of Britain bear steppe DNA from Bronze Age herders. Italians carry traces from Greeks, Romans, and North Africans. Spaniards show genetic input from centuries of Moorish rule. In nearly every corner of Europe, DNA reads like a palimpsest, layer upon layer of migrations and mixtures. But the Basques resisted. Their DNA offers something rare, a snapshot of Europe before the great reshaping migrations. Geneticists often describe the Basques as a control group, a baseline against which other European populations can be measured. By comparing Basques to their neighbors, scientists can see how much mixing and replacement occurred elsewhere, and just how unusual it is to find a people whose ancestry has remained so stable for millennia. The numbers are striking. Analyses show that modern Basques still resemble Iron Age Iberians more closely 
than they do many of their immediate Spanish or French neighbors. Roughly 70% of Basque men carry R1 BDF 27, the same lineage that took root more than 4,000 years ago. Genome-wide studies confirm that their overall genetic profile has barely shifted for at least 3,000 years. That level of continuity is almost unheard of in Europe, where populations have usually been reshaped several times over. And yet, the Basques are not a relic frozen in amber. They share about 70% of their genome with other Iberians. They are European, but distinctively so, set apart by the missing layers that their neighbors absorbed. No Bronze Age steppe ancestry, no significant North African admixture, and little evidence of Roman genetic influence. It's a reminder that identity isn't just about what's added, but also about what's preserved. For science, this makes the Basques invaluable. They help answer fundamental questions. How did early farming populations mix with hunters? What did Europe look like before Indo-European languages spread? How much of Europe's diversity was shaped by migration? And how much by isolation? But for culture, the Basques carry a different lesson. They show that language, geography, and identity can act as forces as powerful as armies. The Pyrenees Mountains provided a natural shield. Euskera acted as a firewall, discouraging assimilation. Myth and tradition anchored them to their homeland. Together, these forces slowed down history itself. In a globalized world where languages vanish every month and cultures dissolve into one another, the Basques remind us that survival is possible, not just in genetics, but in spirit. They are proof that cultural resilience can preserve identity even when surrounded by empires, invasions, and centuries of pressure. The Basques matter today not just as a scientific curiosity, but as a living connection to the deep past. They are a bridge between Ice Age hunters, Neolithic farmers, and the modern world. They show us that Europe's story isn't just about change, it's also about endurance. So, are the Basques the last true descendants of Europe's earliest farmers? Are they the children of Ice Age hunters who found refuge in the Pyrenees? Or have they preserved something even older? Something no DNA test can fully capture? Tell us what you think in the comments. Are the Basques Europe's last link to prehistory? Or simply a people who mastered the art of survival? If you've enjoyed this journey into one of Europe's greatest genetic mysteries, hit like, subscribe, and join us here at Stone and Bone. We bring you more untold stories of ancient DNA, forgotten migrations, and the deep roots of human identity.